Check. Stop recording. Tomb Hunter. Items view list. Mass Innocence and NS Studios Tomb Hunter 1, 0, 7. Main menu. Start game S. Tutorial T. Options O. Exit game X. Options O. Options menu. Enable exporting speech output to log.txt L. Enable pitch manipulation of the character movement sounds P. Speech output S. Audio output A. Main menu. Start game S. Tutorial T. Hala, welcome to Tomb Hunter by Massinescence and NS Studios. We are about to hook you up with some knowledge about this game's mechanics. Hope you're ready. Press enter to continue. First of all, I hope you read the readme. I ain't gonna read it for ya. Press enter to continue. Now, hop over to the right. Press enter to continue. Now. Sleep mode on. You have now arrived at the bottom of the stairs. You can climb up or down the stairs by using the up or down arrows. You can also run by holding control, and you can also jump up the stairs by pressing space. Now climb up and walk right. Press enter to continue. See that fire to the right? That's a hazard. You have to jump over those if you wish to stay alive. Most hazards are surrounded by a ledge on each side. Try now to hop over it by first stepping onto the ledge, pressing space, and holding the right arrow. Press enter to continue. Nicely done. Now, that's how you do a standard jump. Press enter to continue. Sometimes you'll need to jump farther than that, though. This is where the running jump comes in handy. There's another fire hazard on your right, but this one is bigger. The only way you're gonna clear this one is if you first start running, and once you're very close to the hazard, you press space to jump without stopping, and you hold both right arrow and control. Try it now. Press enter to continue. That's how it's done. Another item of interest to you is a rope. The way you use it is you usually jump onto it, and then you climb up slash down. You'll know you're at the beginning of one when you hear a thump-like sound. You should be careful when climbing down, though, because if you climb down off its bottom, you will start falling. Feel free to try out the rope on the right. Press enter to continue. Pretty easy, huh? Now, some ropes can slide, which means that you have to hold onto it either by moving, or by holding the up arrow even when you've reached the top of it. If you do not, you will slide, and you will eventually slide off the rope. And in some cases that's what you want to happen, but that could be life-threatening in other cases. There's a sliding rope on your right. Check it out. Press enter to continue. Sliding rope, five feet. Al Alrighty, next up, enemies. The first enemy you'll need is a skeleton. A skeleton isn't very fast, but it will hurt you if it gets too close to you. Remember that this game isn't necessarily a shooter kind of a game, so you gotta use a different technique than the spray and pray one. You will do this by jumping over the enemies, timing it right, etc. Press enter to continue. Now go find a skeleton and get familiar with your first enemy. Press enter to continue. That wasn't too scary now, was it? You should know that there are a lot more enemies than that, and they are all different. Some enemies can poison you, which is curable with a potion. More about that later. Some of them can paralyze you, some of them can have a weapon of their own that they can attack you with, etc. Depending on the level, enemies can be either stationary, they'll stay in place, they can walk around minding their business and attack you only if they run into you, they can hunt you down, and they can also bait you by staying in one place and either being quiet or pretending to sleep slash beg for help until you either attack them or jump over them, and then they will try to hunt you down. Press enter to continue. Okay, let's talk about weapons. The weapons in this game are single-use weapons, and all of them, except the mines are thrown. They all have different speed, range, and damage. Sword is the only weapon that can cut through multiple enemies at once, but it also has the most restricted range compared to other throwable weapons. The mines work a little bit different. Once you fire a mine, it will be lit, and place two tiles away from you. Once an enemy or you step on it, it will explode. Press enter to continue. You can use weapons by either using the inventory, or you can draw them by pressing numbers 1 through 5. Fire by pressing the letter S, and checking how many of the drawn weapons you have by pressing shift and S. Press enter to continue. Continue going right, and you'll find a weapon and an enemy. Feel free to kill it if you wish. Press Skeleton, 7 feet checkpoint. Skeleton, 9 feet check. Skeleton, 12 feet. Skeleton, 10 feet. Skeleton, 7 feet. Skeleton, 9 feet check. Skeleton, 8 feet. Skeleton, 11 feet. Skeleton, 9 feet checkpoint. 23 feet. Skeleton, 6 feet checkpoint. Skeleton, 6 feet checkpoint. Skeleton, 9 feet checkpoint. No weapon selected. How about the items you ask? A big part of this game are items, potions, lives, weapons, etc. Each item has a specific sound, and once you pick them up, they will be in your inventory, and you can interact with most of them. You get them by stepping on their position, and they will be automatically picked up. Sometimes they will be on the ground, but sometimes they will be in the air and you have to jump to pick them up. There's an item on your right. Go snatch it. Press enter to continue. Potions will restore your health gradually. You can use a potion by interacting with the inventory, or by simply pressing P. You can check how many potions you have by pressing shift and P. Now go find another item. Press enter to continue. Lives don't show up in the inventory, but you can check how many you have by pressing H. There are more items I want to introduce you to. Press enter to continue. Checkpoints will remember the position you were at, and once you die, provided that you have at least one life left, you will be sent back to the position of the checkpoint, and not all the way back to the beginning of the map. Now let's introduce you to some more stuff. Press enter to continue. That on your right is a vanishing platform. As the name suggests, it's a platform that periodically disappears. The typical usage for these platforms is to have a hazard under it, so that if you do not time it right, once the platform disappears, you fall into the hazard. Press enter to continue. You may ask well, how do I know when it's active or not? Well, you'll know based on the sound it makes. It plays a sound while it's active, and stays silent while it's not. Remember that you should always use the camera slash spyglass to figure out where the vanishing platform is at. Most of them will be in the air, which means that you need to jump onto them. Press enter to continue. So, there's a vanishing platform and a hazard to your right. Try it out. Remember that you first need to hear the platform active sound, then jump, and run or jump across it. Press enter to continue. Press enter to continue. 
Perfect. The next thing is a force field. This electricity barricade, just like vanishing platforms, periodically activates. It can be a few tiles wide, and it can also be tall, which would prevent you from jumping over it when it's active. Press enter to continue. The point is that you have to wait for the force field to be inactive in order to get past it. You'll know when it's inactive by listening for the sound change. Inactive force fields will sound different than their active counterparts. If you run into it while it's active, it will send you flying in the opposite direction, and it will hurt you. Press enter to continue. Ready to try it? Well, I hope you are. Remember, once the sound changes to a rumbling kind of a noise, run or jump past it. Off you go. Press enter to continue. Expectations. Met. The next thing we're gonna talk about are streams. Streams pull you in a certain direction. They can have items about them, and you're supposed to get the items, which is harder, because you have to fight the power of the current by doing running jumps continuously until you get the items. You'll see a stream if you continue going right. Press enter to continue. Good going. Press enter to continue. Golden gems are currencies in Tomb Hunter. You can use them to buy things from the shop, which is dynamic. I dot e dot. Different items appear in different levels, and slash or in different circumstances. Press enter to continue. Buying items will help you greatly, and it is necessary in order to complete certain levels. So make sure to check the shop every level to see if there's something new. Press enter to continue. Let's see what's next. A conveyor belt. Press enter to continue. Pretty much like streams. These game entities will pull you in a certain direction, but they are usually not as harmless as streams, as they either have something, e dot, g dot, an enemy, placed at the edges, or there could be two of them used at once with a hole in between, and a hazard below, so that you have to jump from the first onto the other one. Press enter to continue. To your right is a conveyor belt, coupled with another one just like in the previous example. So what you're supposed to do is, jump onto the first conveyor belt. Once you do, the conveyor will pull you, and you'll hear a beep coming closer and closer to you. Once it's almost in the center, jump to your right onto another conveyor belt, and repeat the same procedure as with the first one, but this time jump right and you land on concrete. Press enter to continue. Ready to rocket? Let's go. Press enter to continue. Those conveyor belts can sometimes be hard to master, but what matters is that you did it. Press enter to continue. The next thing that you can probably hear to your right is a maglev. A maglev is a magnetic force, whose sole purpose is to lift you up to a higher platform in the map. All you gotta do is just step onto it, and you'll hear a beep once it's started, and once it's finished lifting you, press enter to continue. Now step on it, I'll see you on the other side. Press enter to continue. Welcome to the next part of this torture. Let's see what kind of spine chilling, hair raising things await you here. Press enter to continue. The wishing sound you should be able to hear on the left is a spike. It periodically strikes, and you have to pass it. Press enter to continue. You'll do that by paying attention to the rhythm of the wishing, and timing it so that you go across in between the strikes. Press enter to continue. You shouldn't try to jump over it, as that would ensure your death. Press enter to continue. So, what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Remember, listen to the timing of the wishes, and time it so you pass under it when it's not about to strike. Good luck. Press enter to continue. Spike. One foot. Folder. Alrighty. We've now come to a part that'll wake you up. Presenting. A boulder. Press enter to continue. Boulders are huge rocks that move around, and if they hit you, they can kill you instantly, or at least hurt you very much. Some of them will kill you as soon as they get close to you, and there's no way to avoid them, but some of them you'll be able to jump over. In this tutorial, we'll only show the avoidable kind, and guess what? It's right over there, on your left. Feel free to practice dealing with it. Press enter to continue. Boulder, six feet. I mean, we spent time making a spyglass and camera for you to use them. Press enter to continue. You are one more step away from completing this tutorial. Press enter to continue. The next part of the game mechanics is flying bombs. They are explosives that are being launched from above and will fall around you. You must use strategy and move the way that prevents them from falling on you. A part of that strategy should probably not be to jump because that will give you less time to escape. Press enter to continue. Remember, run. And if you see one of them is in your way, stop. If you see one of them is heading straight for you, move. It's not that complex. I'm sure you'll do good. Now, let's see. Press enter to continue. Great. The next thing is a sensor. Press enter to continue. Sensors use beams that they emit periodically and within a certain range. You have to jump over them. If the beam hits you, the sensor will spawn an armed guard. Press enter to continue. There's a sensor to your left. Try it. Press. Sword. Some sensors will deactivate themselves once they hit you, but others will stay on. Press enter to continue. Now it is time to show you the teleporter. Press enter to continue. Much like maglevs, teleporters are used to move you, but unlike maglevs, they can go in any four directions. Up, down, left and slash or right. Feel free to try it. Press enter to continue. 35. 50 dirt facing left. 10. 50 dirt facing left. At last, we've come to the last item. It is a scroll. It is the most important item in this game, as you must pick it up if you dream of finishing a level, as there's one in every level, and failing to find it and pick it up will prevent you from completing the level. Press enter to continue. Now, pick it up. Press enter to continue. You should also know that some levels require you to pick up other items, too. Not just the scroll. You'll need to explore and find those items in order to complete those levels. Press enter to continue. You should also know that some levels re- On your left is a level portal. Just as the name suggests, it's a portal that teleports you to the next level. In this case, it will let you complete the tutorial. Press enter to continue. Now walk into it. You deserved it. Press enter to continue. Awesome. You have completed the tutorial. Please remember that the tutorial shows you only the basics. This game is an adventure style game, and you'll be expected to explore and figure things on your own, but this should help at least a bit. Press enter to continue. Main menu. Start new game S. Are you sure you would like to override your save? Yes, why? Storyline review. 
A teenager by the name of Frederick was notorious for spending nights by looking at the stars with his telescope close to a tomb. There's been a rumor going around that some tombs occasionally emitted some strange whispering noises, and people have speculated for ages that every tomb has a special scroll that gives unimaginable power to a person capable of going through the troubles in order to get it. One night, Frederick was following his usual routine of looking at the stars, but this time, he got closer to one of the tombs. It could have been minutes or hours later, when he heard rumbling and sound similar to whispering. He felt a strong, magnetic-like force pulling him toward the tomb. Before he could do anything about it, he got sucked into a pitch black space, and he was falling. After what seemed like forever, he landed on sand. He looked around, it seemed as if he was in a world of its own. He wondered whether he's dead, whether he was in heaven, hell? His curiosity soon took over him, and he started exploring. He, his curiosity soon took over him, and he started exploring. Level 1, Tomb 1 8, 6 feet checkpoint, 15 feet ladder, 17 feet wall, 21 No weapon selected, sword Good, 246 HP for life Slightly injured, 187 No weapon selected. Sword. Shot. Sell a potion. Five gold. Shift plus P. Three gold. Ledge, six feet long. Excellent, 300 HP, three lives. Ledge, two feet. Four feet, ten foot drop onto dirt. Five feet. Four foot drop onto ledge. Six feet ledge. Ten feet seven. Four foot drop onto. Eight. Bottom of ladder. Fire hazard. Eight feet. Eight foot drop into a fire hazard. Three feet. Bottom of ladder. Fire hazard. Eight feet.
Excellent. 300 HP, one life. New notification from Battery Saver. Battery Saver is on. Consider plugging in your device. One of one window. Game over. Press enter to continue. Charging. Main menu. Start new game S. Continue game C. Level 2. Tune 1. Gold 3, Potion 3 Soul 1, Gem 2 Bottom of ladder, Fire Hazard, 7 feet Ladder, seven feet. Three swords. Water, six feet, eight foot drop on. Water, three feet, eight foot drop onto river, nine feet. Eight foot drop onto river, two feet. Eight foot drop onto river, one foot. Great, two hundred sixty HP for life. Wall, 2 feet. Top of ladder. Well, six feet. Thirty one foot drop onto the level four, two and two.
gold, eight feet gold, eleven feet potion, twelve feet. Nine foot drop onto dirt, one foot dirt, ten feet, sixty nine foot drop onto sand, eleven feet. Gem, three feet. Nine foot drop onto concrete, one foot gem, eight feet concrete, ten feet, nine foot drop onto dirt, eleven feet dirt, twenty feet, sixty nine foot drop. Seventeen foot drop into a fire hazard, one foot. Road, fire hazard, fourteen feet dirt, seventeen feet. Road, fire hazard, 10 feet dirt, 13 feet, 69 foot drop onto sand, 14. Road, fire hazard, 7 feet dirt, 10 feet, 69 foot drop onto sand, 11 feet. Concrete stairs, 19 feet, 15 foot. Good, 241 HP, 7 lives. Nothing. Level 5, Tomb 2. Level 4 Swords. One HP seven lives. Good, two hundred. Two hundred seventy five, one hundred fifty dirt facing right. Level six, tomb three. Four feet.
Dirt. One foot. Mm. Very injured. 91 HP, 6 lives. 8 potions. Four shot. Slightly injured. 191 HP, 6 lives. Six foot drop into a hazard. Fifteen feet hazard. Six foot drop into a hazard. Nine feet hazard. Mm. Very injured. One hundred six HP. Six lives. Six foot drop into a hazard. Sixteen feet. To 268, 6 foot drop into a hazard, 9 feet hazard, 15 feet. Ooh. 3 foot drop into a hazard, 14 feet. Ooh. 3 foot drop into a hazard, 4 feet hazard, 7 feet. Good. 252 HP, 5 lives. Zero. Zero sand facing left. Main menu. Exit game X. Tomb Hunter. Items view list. TH.X5 of 5. Ops 27. Start for. Stop recording checkbox check. Stop recording dialogue. Yes button.